Welcome to another video. The mission in this video is actually to compute one half factorial. But we're used to using the factorial for natural numbers. I just want to show you how it is possible to compute the factorial of numbers that are not natural numbers. Well, in the first place, remember, as soon as we were able to get our gamma function, and we also got the pi function, which is the shifted version of the gamma function, we straight away were able to compute the factorial of zero. You remember that. So let's try and plot the points of the factorials we know. Remember, zero factorial, we have now come to conclude that it is one. So zero factorial is going to be one. We plot this point. Let's use another color. We plot this point. One factorial is also one. Two factorial is two times one, which gives us two. So it's gonna be somewhere here. Three factorial is six. So it has to be, this is five, six has to be somewhere here, right? Okay. And four factorial is four times three times two times one, it's 24. So it's gotta be somewhere here. Ta -da -da -pa -pa -da. Okay, somewhere here. And 5 factorial is 120. It's beyond the scope of this graph. But Euler was working on this and said, can we guess by extrapolation or interpolation? Well, that's a term that is used in statistics a lot. Like, if we know the beginning and the ending, can we get the, guess the middle? by going as, as close as possible based on the characteristics? And they started looking at what if it is this? Let's test it. Let's test this. And they notice that it is possible to actually find the other values to a significant degree of accuracy. And it, the whole thing led to the invention of the gamma function. So now what we're going to do is what I'm showing you right now is the shifted gamma function, which is the pi function, because this matches the factorials. Now, if we try to join these points together smoothly, we're no longer having discrete points. We're having a continuous function. Ta oh, it goes to the factorial. That's perfect. Okay. Did you see that? That's like a miracle. <laughs> now, it means we can actually find three point something factorial. Wait, why did I choose that point? Hey, what number is between three and four that is the most famous number we know? It is pi. It means we can also compute pi factorial because there is the existence of a continuous function that links all numbers especially if they are positive. Now, if we try to go beyond zero and go to the left, the gamma function does not stop. It actually continues. It goes on like that. Ta -da -da. But it cannot cross the minus one line. It just goes on forever into infinity as you approach negative one. And then once you go past negative one, it skips. So this goes this way, and then on the left, you now start having graphs that are not continuous at these negative integer points, but they exist in other points, but just not at these points. See here, they exist everywhere. On the other side, they exist in these gaps, but not on the integer points. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the behavior of the gamma function, or maybe it's going to be the pi function. So. Essentially, I just showed you it is possible to compute values between, I think this thing actually drops below that. See, I didn't sketch this part well. It's supposed to go like this. Ta, yeah, it's not as smooth as I did. So this actually comes down a little bit before going back up. Let's find half factorial using the pi function. Let's get into the video.
Now that we have a function that is continuous for what we're about to compute, we don't need to worry about whether the ex exponent here is n or z or x or t, it doesn't matter, whatever letter you want to use, nobody gets confused because this is a continuous function. So if we try to compute one half factorial, it is not impossible. We just need to replace x in this integral with one half and see where it leads us. So what we're going to do is say one half factorial will be, I'm going to skip this and just write the integral from zero to infinity of t to the one half e to the negative t dt. Just to make my life easy, I'm going to get rid of this one half because if you keep integrating one half, that t to the one half will keep showing up. It never goes away. Okay, let u be equal to t to the one half. Okay, that means u squared will be t. So let's just say u squared is t. Okay, that's a better substitution. Now that means that du, 2u du will be equal to dt. Huh, nice. Okay, it looks like that's all I have to do. Now that means I can say that one half factorial is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of, oh, by the way, when I do my u substitution, do the boundaries change? Well, when t is zero, zero squared, will, u squared will be zero. That's good. When t is infinity, u squared will also be infinity because the square root of infinity is infinity. Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're good. It doesn't matter. Um, ah, nice. So we keep the boundaries the way they are, and then we're going to say t to the one half is just u. Okay, that was the original substitution I made. So this is u, and this is going to be e to the negative t. What is t? u squared. Oh, d t d what d what's dt oh dt is 2u du oh i have to replace all of it so it becomes times 2u du i was almost celebrating that this is easier than i thought okay now if we multiply everything this looks like we're gonna have this two will come back here two times the integral from zero to infinity of u times u is u squared e to the negative u squared. Ah, du. Okay, this is a dangerous integral because it's one of those integrals that unless you know the Gaussian integral, you cannot integrate. So the power here is exactly the same as what is here. And ah, uh, okay, we got to do something special. What do we do? Well, we still have to do integration by parts because it doesn't look like this guy is going away. Wait, we will need to split this in two. Nice. We need to split this in two so that we can write this integral as two times the integral from zero to infinity of, what would this be? This is gonna be u times u e to the negative u squared du. So when we do our integration by parts, we're going to differentiate this, we're going to integrate this. This one can be integrated, I know that. And that's it. So let's do it. Because I don't have a lot of space left, I'm just going to do the rough work here for this integration so we know what happens when you integrate this. So how do we integrate this? Well, we know that the derivative of negative u squared is going to contain some u, and that's it. That's all we need. So we have to do another substitution. So let's say we want to integrate. We're going to ignore these bounds for now. We just want to integrate u e to the negative u squared du. Okay, we're gonna say, um, let this be, let's call it V. So, nice. See, we've gotten our U du, which is this guy, U du, which means negative one half dV is U du. So we know that negative one half dV is equal to U 
du. So we can easily go back here and say, hey, what we have here is the integral of e to the v, e to the v times negative one half dv because we're going to replace u du with this so this is gone okay and this is all you need to integrate well we know the negative one half it's negative one half if you integrate e to the v dv you still get e to the v and that's it well we don't want to do plus c at this moment so when we int uh, oh what is v v is negative u squared so our answer is actually negative one half of e to the negative u squared. Nice. So note, when this is integrated, this is what we're going to get. The only thing that changes is that this u is replaced with negative one half. Everything else is fine and we're done with the integration. So let's do our di method for this integration, which is going to be, we're going to differentiate and we're going to integrate. That's how you do it. It's easy. It's easy like Sunday morning. So we got u here and you've got u e to the negative u squared. If you differentiate this, I'm going to keep this on the board until I'm done with this so I don't forget. If you differentiate u, what do you get? You get 1. If you integrate this, what do you get? Bam! Negative 1 half e to the negative u squared. So now we have computed this integral in this table form. All we have to do is multiply this way and multiply this way and put the integral sign around it. Okay. Um, oh, and it's being multiplied by two. So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say one over two factorial is equal to two multiplied by what I'm about to write, which is this times this, which is negative, I'm actually going to combine these two together effectively. It's going to be um, negative u over 2e to the u squared. Nice. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to multiply this way, and it's going to be plus 1 half of the integral from zero to, oh, this has to be evaluated. Ah, I have to evaluate this from zero to infinity, okay? This has to be evaluated from zero to infinity. I know I shouldn't write it here, but I don't think I have good space here. So it's gonna be e to the negative u squared du. Okay, I think I have to make some conclusions quickly. This integral is the Gaussian integral halfway. Remember how I started the other video? Yes. So this is going to be your square root of pi over 2. That's what you get there. But firstly, let this 2 take care of this 2 and also take care of this 2. So what we have is just going to be something like this. It's going to be, so I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as r goes to infinity of negative u over 2e to the u squared evaluated from 0 to r. Okay, this 2 has taken care of this 2 and this 2, so what we have left is just this. It's going to be plus the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared du. You see, this is the Gaussian integral, the half way Gaussian integral, which we know is square root of pi over 2. When you take this limit, as this goes to infinity, just look at this. This is going to grow much slower than this. So this is going to go to 0. And when you plug in 0 here, this is going to be 0 over 1. It's going to be 0. So everything on this side will become 0. But this guy is square root of pi over 2. It doesn't change. So your 1 half factorial is equal to 0 plus the square root of pi over 2, which is 
square root of pi over 2. Square root of pi over 2, which is approximately 0 0.8888 eight, eight something, whatever it is. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.